The last time you saw me, I had really long, luscious hair. Then I cut it all off. Now, there was a plan for that just in general. I had a reason, I was scheming, and here we are with this video that I'm currently making. Yeah, you do suck at growing your hair out because there's a lot of things that make it less of a pain when you're growing out your hair. So the few things that I'm gonna be talking about in this video is styling, products that I use, possibly vitamins that I take to grow my hair out very long because clearly I've grown it out pretty long very fast within three months. And third, I'm gonna be getting another haircut. 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 And now you wanna get nice, long, luscious hair, possibly like mine before or currently, and you want a different hairstyle. Now that requires a whole different foundation to your hair in terms of styling and as well as the haircut. The main thing that I wanna emphasize about haircuts is that people go in for trims. You know, you're not building that foundation. When you go in for a haircut, you're gonna wanna get layers and texture. Those are the two things that I'd like to emphasize highly because if you don't get that, you're not building yourself up for success. You need to build yourself up for success so that you don't have that awkward hair phase that everyone gets. Of course, when you're growing the sides out, like you're going to be in a very weird place because it will be, depending on your hair type, it might be pushing out this way and you're just gonna have to deal with it. But the top of your hair, as it continues to grow, if you get it layered and textured, you will have a great time in doing so and growing it out and it won't be such a drag. But my recommendations to everybody growing their hair out, whether it's the back, the sides, maybe everything just entirely, you're gonna wanna go in every three to four months to get some work done. Relayer it, retexture it, and maybe thin out some areas that are too thick so that it allows you to have more volume, you know, because my hair is very thick. I don't have a lot of hair. My hair is just very thick, so it has a lot of density and it will weigh down the hair if it's not thinned out every so often. So remember that, keep that in mind. When you're going to a hairstylist, ask them if you need to get it thinned out, you know, in certain areas so that you have more availability to work with it in terms of getting more volume, more texture. Just explain these things to your hairstylist of what you're trying to achieve so that they have a better recipe of giving you the perfect hairstyle that you'd like. Now let's go into exactly how I style my hair. So first you're going to want to go into the shower. You're going to want to take a shower. I mean, come on. It's pretty simple. Use your conditioner, co-wash. Once you get out of the shower, you're going to want to get your microfiber cloth, towel, whatever you'd like to call it, and scrunch your hair very lightly because your hair is in a fragile state when it's wet. So be very careful with it. Be very gentle. Scrunch your hair and leave your microfiber cloth, towel, thing on your head. Now for me, I have a lot of hair product and I could say that myself. Well, I do actually have a lot of styling products that I do use when I had longer hair, but I don't use these because I have a lot shorter hair and my hair doesn't really need all that stuff on it. Also, if you ever decide to use oils, use it when you have damp to dry hair. Never use it on wet hair because it does not bond on your hair. It will come off. It's an oil and water and oil don't mix. But I don't use any styling milks on my hair just because it's how short it is and it kind of doesn't really need that to weigh it down. So what I typically do use is I go in with a scalp tonic. And my favorite to use is Colton King's Scalp Tonic on my scalp. And there's also this one that I have not tried yet, which is from Crown Affair. And it's also a calming scalp serum, which you would spray into your scalp. But it's the first thing I do to my hair. And I kind of just spray it. I'm also forgetting the wider tooth comb that I use as well on my hair because it helps kind of part and also just detangle my hair a little bit. Helps me get all this product in to where it needs to be. Then I go in with one of these guys, it's silicone and it lets me get all the product really in that scalp as I comb it through. People do use this when they use rosemary oil and stuff, and you can also do that with your oils that you put on your scalp. People use this in the shower, as I do have one in my shower that I will use when I shampoo, but I also have one out of the shower, which is for the specific thing. Then the second thing we're gonna go in with is a sea salt spray. And I don't spray this onto the front of my hair, I only get the back in the sides for that volume. I spray it on my hands because it allows me to have more control over it versus just spraying directly into my hair. I have more control of where the product goes and that kind of goes for everything. Now, the second thing that I use while my hair is still damp, then I go in with this set spray from Colton King and you can use any set spray that you might use, anything that kind of holds the hair in place. But I spray a few in my hands once again and I scrunch it throughout the entirety of my hair. For me, I feel like with shorter hair, uh, your hair tends to have a lot more volume and the styling mix aren't going to necessarily be bad, but if you use too much product with shorter hair, it can weigh down your hair and you don't want that. You want a lot of volume, you want 
nice texture going on. And to me, so far, I've been using just the set spray, the scalp tonic, and the uh, salt spray. So now moving forward, I pretty much just kind of let my hair do its thing and dry like this naturally. You can find your part, but my hair is already parted where it typically is, which is by this eyebrow, and you can see where it's parting there. And throughout the time of it drying, I typically will kind of rework my hair into place of where it needs to be. And I like to do this method where you kind of pinch, you kind of pinch your hair to go in the direction that you'd like it to go which I don't see a lot of people doing a lot of the times when they have their hair just in general. It really helps kind of direct your hair and where it needs to dry. And if you keep it like this, it will dry like a swoop, which is what people are looking for. It's pretty simple. Let your hair dry and then go back in like 30 minutes to rework your hair and then just see where you need to go from there. As for me, I'm currently cooking. As we can see, my hair is currently taking shape and it is a little drier than it was earlier. I got my food, I cooked about 12 eggs approximately in this with some chicken sausage and spinach. Got my coffee. Now if you want more volume, obviously you probably would wanna use a blow dryer and blow dry the middle part now as it's damp and kind of just using certain techniques to actually lift the hair where it's more voluminous. But I don't have a blow dryer, so I can't really do any videos in terms of techniques of blow drying. I haven't had one in a minute, but leave some comments about really good blow dryers that I could probably purchase to make a video about blow drying techniques for hair. But I'll feast and we'll get back to the video. Now when it comes to washing your hair, I still co-wash every day, but I shampoo about once to twice a week, depending. Now, my hair's a lot shorter than how it used to be when it was longer, and when it was longer, I was able to get away with shampooing at least once every two weeks or once a week, but since the hair strands are a lot shorter now currently, the oil travels down my hair strands a lot faster compared to my hair when it was a lot longer. And especially when you get those maintenance cuts, it will be a little bit shorter, so you may need to shampoo maybe a little bit more frequently than you were prior. Now, before I move on, I do want to explain the reasoning behind why people with thinner hair tend to have more oily hair faster and need to shampoo more frequently, and the reason why thicker hair people can go a little bit longer without having to shampoo. And the main reason is the hair density and how thick the hair strands are. Overall, with thicker hair, the hair oil tends to travel a lot slower due to the thickness of the hair and your hair strands. Now, with people that have thinner hair, it tends to be a lot, obviously, thinner, and your hair oils that come from your scalp do tend to travel a lot faster due to the, the fact that the density is a lot thinner. Now, obviously, thicker and thinner hair people are gonna have completely different routines when it comes to shampooing and conditioning and what products they need to use, and it all varies. So, keep that in mind when you're buying product. Don't buy a product that I'm buying because I have really thick hair. For your thinner hair people, you're gonna to wanna to go in with very light conditioners and very light products. Maybe avoiding a lot of hair oils, just in general. The only people that should be using any hair oils are people with thicker hair that can take that amount of oil on their hair. People with thinner hair, it's probably something you'd wanna avoid altogether. But you can still use them. I've seen people with, with thin hair use it still, and it still is fine, but you just have to be very aware with how much you put on because a lot of things will weigh down your hair when it comes to styling and also any product that you use can also weigh down your hair a lot compared to somebody like me who has really thick hair. So keep that in mind. Now some supplements I take are biotin and a plethora of others, but I'm at the age where I'm allowed to take some of these vitamins, but be wary because it's all dependent on your age. So some people shouldn't be taking this and some people should, it, again, it varies on age. So be careful. Now before I get a haircut, let me talk about today's sponsor, Poison. Poison is one of the premier sneaker marketplaces and they gave me some special discounts for my supporters. And you can use these limited codes to get up to $30 off your next purchase. Now I'm sure you're wondering, what is Poison? Well, Poison is an online shopping platform that has over 300,000 authenticated products which are all affordable at super competitive prices. And they also sell clothes like Yoji and Rick Owens. And when you buy something from Poison, it'll come with this wonderful blue box. And they go through a rigorous authentication process so when you see the verification buckles, you know it's 100% authentic. Also, you'll be able to return the item within three days of the item's arrival. So you enjoy shopping without any worries. So Poison's a perfect place to buy shoes for your everyday use or maybe even your gym shoes. Because I picked up some Wales Bonners for the gym 
And I also have plans for later content that I decide to put these in. And just in case you forgot, remember to use these codes for up to $30 off your next purchase. Just in case you might need to buy someone a gift or even get some new cool sneakers for your next outfit. So remember that. But anyways, back to the video. But the one thing that I do want to emphasize is that if you're shampooing three times a week and your friend is only shampooing once and it works for him, it's because you guys have different hair types and it's all different amongst different people. So it is okay if you're shampooing more often than usual. Now, the other thing that I wanna tackle really quickly, and I was gonna do this for a overall hair care video, but I'm just gonna do it here and now, and I will probably readdress it again when I do that hair care video. But the thing is with shampooing and conditioning, people do not know how to actually do it correctly, and it's driving me insane. So the first thing I wanna tackle is shampooing. When you're shampooing your hair, if you're getting everything, you should stop doing that right now. What you need to be shampooing is your scalp. The whole point of shampooing is to cleanse the area of the scalp from dead skin, hair oils, and built over product that you've just left over time and that hasn't came off. And the idea of a shampoo is like a cleanser for your face, it's just a cleanser for your scalp. So when you're going in with a shampoo, you should be cleansing twice. So the first one is you're gonna be putting it throughout your scalp, rub it in. Do not get any of the hair strands because what ends up happening is your hair strands get very brittle and dry when you're shampooing, really bad, gross dead ends, and that's not what you want. You want healthy, shiny hair. So just get the scalp. That is where all the hair oils are being produced, and that's what you need to cleanse. So after the first go around, you wanna go in with a second, a second round of shampooing your scalp again. You might be questioning why do you need to double cleanse your scalp or double shampoo, whatever you like to call it. And it's because the first round of shampooing essentially rids your hair and scalp of dirt, oil, and product buildup. The second round ensures that your hair and scalp are truly clean and that your hair gets all the nourishment it needs. So yes, the answer is you should be double shampooing or cleansing your scalp every time you go into the shower that you need to shampoo do it twice, all right? Done and done. Now moving forward, when you condition your hair, you do not condition your scalp, you condition the ends of your hair to close to the root. You do not want to get your scalp because it's only gonna cause more oil buildup. It's probably not gonna be really good for your hair just in general. So remember, when you're conditioning, you're going to wanna get the hair, not your scalp. It's not supposed to go on your scalp, it's supposed to go on your hair strands. So when you're conditioning, just rub it all in, get a comb, usually is what I do in the shower and I comb it all through. So I get all the conditioner through my hair so that I know all my hair strands are being covered and coated with the conditioner and wait about two to three minutes before washing it out and rinsing it out. But remember that, conditioner does not go on your scalp, only shampoo goes on your scalp and shampoo does not go on your hair strands, shampoo only goes on your scalp. Remember that. Then we're all good, thank God. Let's move on with this video. So today's a day, <coughs> Jesus. So today's a day that I get a haircut. I wear a plain black t-shirt, a nice good jacket, and I go and get business done and then I come right back. So you'll see me after I get a haircut. This is a typical outfit for me. You know, something casual, something light. I got this new bag recently that I've been carrying all my stuff in. But other than that, I'm gonna go get my hair cut and then I'll be right back for the styling. I don't think my hair is gonna change too much, but this is pretty much me after my haircut. It's nice and layered and textured and as it continues to grow, it will just grow into something way better. I will continue to work on different methods because it is a little bit shorter. I could have kept the length and just got it layered, but I wanted it to go a little shorter on top so it grew in kind of at different rates. So this is the sides. This is the top of my hair, you can see the sides, so it kind of blends in. There's like a disconnect, clearly. But trust me, when this grows in, it's gonna look really good. And I just have that foundation for it to build on rock, so to speak. But all I did to get this hairstyle was basically the same thing. I went with a co-wash, I used a microfiber cloth, towel on my hair. As my hair was damp, I went in with a tonic and put that on my scalp, just like usual. Pretty much the same process. And then once again, I got my set spray, put it in my hands, and then just kind of scrunched it into my hair. But yeah, I mean, there's not really much to really say about all that, you know, hi. What's up, YouTube? Today, we're gonna go look at fragrances. Fit check. That is my bike seat, I think. Yeah. Wow. Well, whatever. What are you wearing today? What are you wearing today? Got vintage, Yoji, vintage, vintage, vintage. New haircut. New haircut. What about boots? What are you gonna wear for the shoes? Military. Vintage. Oh, we need to get the full fit. Oh, that too. Oh yeah, it's like 33 degrees right now. 
Nice pop of navy in the green and the black. So I was about to fight a war because he's been watching war movies. <laughs> Me and George had to make a quick pit stop. Pit stop. To go pick up a friend's package, but. Package, it, package denied. Somebody stole it in the building. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. Again. <laughs> twice. The same, the same package twice. It has to be someone from the apartment building, but that's just like kind of New York anyway. Yeah. They definitely know what it is. I mean, I got my play button stolen. I still don't know who took it. Yeah. Did you take it? Uh, I've been searching on eBay for it. <laughs> Jakey, this is interesting. So, yeah. neuroscience-wise, scent, usually your senses go to the part of the brain called the thalamus. And that's like the, it like filters out sensory information. Scent goes straight to the memory and emotional center of the brain. It bypasses the thalamus. It's like the most primal chemical detection we have. That's why it's like really associated with memories. Yeah, like it, it feeds right into that area. From what did you like? What did you like there? What was your uh, your fragrance that you liked? I liked Amnesia Rose, a little Why? smoky rose with um, some warm spices, the saffron I really like dying down. That was me. I found it. I looked at it and I gave it to you. <laughs> JQ found it. Oh yeah. JQ knew. I I knew exactly. What about you, George? What about me? Yeah. What What did I like? What was your fragrance that you liked? Um. Let's see. We uh. The black afghan was a good start, um, but... What about Taroni? You like Taroni? Taroni? Taroni, that was the second one, right? Yeah. Um, incense smell. I, I just prefer the, the, the depth. the top note raspberry. The top note's raspberry? Yeah. I don't remember that. I don't get that. I didn't get yeah, that I didn't get that at all. But the black afghan, but then there's one. There's one special one. Leather wrap bottle. I don't even know the name of it. Leather wrap bottle. Leather <laughs> leather wrap bottle. It's also from that. The it's the same co yeah. company? Uh, okay, that one was so fire. Lovely. Literally, literally whiskey scotch with I'm ash. I'm currently wearing it right now. And some ash in it. It just was gorgeous. I get the ash rather than smoke in that one. It's mm -hmm. like really you can mm -hmm. smell it into my coat. Yeah, yeah, it's another, another, another whiff. Whiff. <laughs> Come here, oh, yeah. come, <laughs> come smell my fragrance. <laughs> so good. So mucho, so. All right, we're going to Wolfong right now. Like the perfumes smell like like floral or like sweet. I don't like a lot of perfumes. They smell like candy. That's not that's not what you want. Yeah, um, that's what I'm saying. You need to wear Dior Sauvage. Yeah, Stephen. Get Vite BMW. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Bonus content. We are back with another uh, funny comments that I'd like to highlight. Our comment comes from this individual right here on screen. It says, bro, you look like the one artistic tall kid in the back of the class that literally never talks. I think any dude that wears glasses is pretty similar, but that was pretty tame uh, for a comment. So I, I wanna find another one. There's another one that I'd like to highlight. And it says, why do you look like Ezra Miller mentally stable? Now th that's a pretty good one, but that's also not the greatest. Um, I'm, going all, I'm going for a third one here. If what you wear looks gay to someone else, even a hater, then chances are it actually is, it is actually gay and there's actually truth behind hate. I have to reread this because it almost makes no sense to me. I don't know, I want to make a whole video about this, like this whole discussion about like what's considered gay dress or whatever. It doesn't make any sense because that's like someone else's thoughts and you can't really dress gay. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, if wearing feminine clothes makes you gay, then I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I dropped avocado on my on my shirt before my my hoodie before I I filmed this, but you know, I get a lot of those comments all the time in regards to things that I wear or things that I talk about. And a lot of it just baffles me because it doesn't make any sense because you can't dress like a sexuality, right? You know, sexual orientation is based off someone's feelings and who they are. It's not the way they dress. You can't, I mean, sure, if you wear like a shirt that says I'm gay, then it probably is true. but. I mean, most clothes that I even wear, I get called gay for wearing when it's just black clothes. 
on the on the baseline of things. You know, there's no logic behind a lot of the comments that I usually do see in, in regards to like things like this, because sometimes if you go under, you know, some of the, the videos on my shorts and stuff about like stuff that I've worn or whatever, there, there'll be so many comments talking about how it's like the purse I'm wearing, which is just like a shoulder bag or a like a tote bag. It's, I don't know, it, it is very strange, the dilemma here, you know, but yeah, that ends it for this segment, you know, bonus content, moving back to whatever else I decide to put in this video. As of right now, this pretty much is going to wrap up the video. There's nothing more to talk about in terms of growing out your hair, layering and texturing. I've mentioned that so many times throughout this video. It's very simple and the idea is constant and ever growing, but we will see my hair when it grows out um, in future videos. I do plan on doing a blow drying technique video at some point because I need a blow dryer bad and there's a lot more stuff you can do with blow dryers and there's a lot more uh, hair care just in general with blow drying. And side note, if you have any questions about hair just in general, anything that you'd like me to make a video about or maybe even comment that I can reply to you in a comment, leave them down below. I will answer them and or make a video. So if you have any ideas, leave them down below. I'd like to get your, I'd like to get your input on possibilities of what you'd like to see me do in the future. But other than that, I'd like to thank the Patreon for supporting me and making these videos. I put all my streams up on there. I've been streaming quite often. I'm trying to figure out a schedule for that, but any streams in the past that I felt were really good, I put on Patreon. But other than that, thank you so much for joining me and I hope I somewhat helped you in terms of you growing out your hair because I know it's a pain, but I figured out the best way. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys later. Are we liking the new haircut? Personally, it's kind of reminiscent of the other haircut that I got besides it being slightly longer. What what makes a male slut? Uh, can I hold the camera really fast? You're doing... No, I... It, makes... Candles, it smells good, it's clean. Candles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He takes care of his skin? He takes care of himself? Joggers. That's a male slut? Yeah. Please check. I really want one. Central C era? Let's go. Patchwork tattoos. Ravy spiky ones. People who look like they don't sleep. Like oh, eye that's a good eye one. Eye yeah, eye bracelet for sure. Yeah, yeah. Modern day. What about yeah, a dude with the septum piercing, specifically the one that's like split, like the bull ring one. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty bad. That's great, eh? That's great, eh? Dangly earrings. Okay. Rick Owen. And or tank tops. Tongue piercings. What I mean. Stay away from them. I don't think that's like a certified slut though. That's it's like it's like a freak. I yeah, it's just a red flag. Yeah. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Can you ask me?